Hello and welcome back to Infinite Banking Step by Step. This is video number six in the series, so if you missed the first several parts, be sure to go back and start at the beginning. Now, last time we looked at some of the components that go into creating a life insurance policy built for infinite banking. Those are the base policy and the PUA rider. In this video, we're going to look at some of the other riders that may be included. The base policy and the PUA rider must be there for this to really be a infinite banking policy, but all of these others could be there too. It just depends on your needs and situation. First up is the term insurance rider. Now, just like a standalone term insurance life policy, this is going to provide a specific amount of death benefit for a specific amount of time. However, this rider is attached to the whole life policy. So let's imagine, as an example, that you have a $300,000 death benefit at the very beginning of your whole life insurance policy. Well, you've attached a $100,000 30-year term insurance rider to that policy. So in other words, you add those together. You've got $400,000 of death benefit, but $100,000 of that is temporary. It lasts for 30 years and only 30 years. Now, if the death benefit is not increasing on your whole life policy, then that means that after 30 years, your term insurance rider will drop. Your death benefit will go down. So then, Instead of $400,000 of death benefit, the $100,000 of term will go away. It will drop off, and you'll go back to $300,000, which is the permanent component of the policy. Now, if you're a client of Perfect Spiral Capital, if you're doing infinite banking, then your base policy is likely to have grown substantially over 30 years, and you're probably buying additional paid-up insurance, which will grow the death benefit even further. So let's say that your death benefit after 30 years is $900,000. Well, still, after 30 years, your $100,000 of term insurance will go away. So it might drop from 900000 to 800000 but it will still drop. Well, you might be asking at this point, why use a term insurance rider at all? I mean, it doesn't earn dividends, it doesn't grow with the policy, and it's going to go away. You know that on day one. So what's the point? The obvious answer is it gives you more death benefit, but from a purely cash value growth standpoint, it provides you more room to buy paid up additions or to use your PUA rider to grow your policy. This is something that's governed by Section 7702 of the Internal Revenue Code in the United States, and it's basically the relationship between how much death benefit you have and how much cash value you have. The goal is to prevent the policy from becoming taxable. You don't want your policy loans to be taxable events, and this is what's governed by Section 7702 of the Internal Revenue Code. So without getting into all the details and without bogging down the video by discussing that in detail, Suffice it to say, adding a little bit of term insurance at a lower cost can give you more room to buy paid-up additions in a policy. However, some people have taken this relatively simple insight, which is just that term insurance, because it is limited in time, is cheaper than whole life insurance. People are creating these gigantic term rider policies. In other words, a very, very small whole life policy with a very, very large term rider attached to it. 
and this creates a whole host of separate problems. In fact, I've got an entire separate video on the dangers to this approach and the numerous disadvantages. As with many things in life, this is a balancing act. If you focus too much on one aspect, then you will suffer in some other aspect of the policy. If you have a base policy only, if you don't have a paid-up additions rider, you don't have a term insurance rider, it's just a base policy by itself, you're going to have extremely limited growth in your cash value in your policy for many years. That's one extreme. The other extreme is to have a very small base policy, an extremely large term insurance rider, and an extremely large level of paid-up addition contributions. If you do this, if you focus exclusively on year one cash value using PUAs, then you will have extremely limited future dividend performance, extremely limited ability to get future policies as you need them to hold your wealth as you earn it. And it's essentially sacrificing the future for the sake of the present, which is in a big way, just completely rejecting the entire idea of infinite banking, which is necessarily long-term oriented. The exact correct policy design for your situation is going to depend on the age and insurability of the person being insured, the total amount of premium going into the policy, over what time frame, etc., etc. It's an extremely complex discussion, and that's why you need a thoroughly competent agent to guide you through that process. That's their job. At Perfect Spiral Capital, my agency, we do use term writers, but only to the extent that they are beneficial to the client. Now, we just spent a long time talking about the term insurance writer. This is a very hotly debated topic in life insurance circles, but there are a number of other riders that could be attached to your policy, and it's worth examining those as well. Here's a few. The waiver of premium rider will allow you to pay an additional premium so that if you become disabled or unable to work according to the terms of the rider, the insurance company will pay your premium for you so that your policy does not lapse. A children's insurance rider provides a small death benefit for the insured's children up to a certain age. An accidental death benefit rider, or sometimes an AD&D, accidental death and dismemberment rider, will provide an additional death benefit payout only if the death results from an accidental bodily injury, or in the case of dismemberment, an accidental bodily dismemberment. An additional insurance rider, sometimes also called an option to purchase additional insurance rider, provides a schedule of guaranteed offers for more permanent death benefit or new whole life policies. This is based on the insured's age and may be a good choice, especially when insuring someone young who will have multiple additional opportunities to buy life insurance. An accelerated death benefit rider will provide access, subject to the terms of the rider, to the death benefit, not just the cash value, but the death benefit of a whole life insurance policy while the insured is still alive if they meet the conditions of the rider. That would be a terminal illness, being diagnosed with a terminal illness, or perhaps being diagnosed with a chronic illness. There are some that even have specific medical conditions that would trigger the rider. These vary quite a bit company to company, so it's worth looking into. A premium deposit fund rider, or sometimes a deposit fund rider, allows you to prepay future premiums subject to the terms of the rider 
and allow those premiums to earn interest while they're waiting to actually pay the bill in the second, third, fourth year, etc. Now, this is by no means a complete list. Every insurance company is going to have slightly different riders, they're going to have slightly different names for the riders, and they're going to have different terms for how these can be used. Some companies may include some of these riders at no cost. Some companies may not have these riders at all. It varies, and it's a very tricky decision to choose what insurance company to go with based on what you're looking for. Also, a whole life insurance illustration just calculates everything together. So a policy with no extra riders will look the same on an illustration as a policy with lots of additional riders. All those additional riders all have a cost. They may completely skew your assessment of cash value potential because they're all just tabulated as the premium. Comparing illustrations between different contracts in the same company is confusing. Comparing illustrations between insurance carriers with widely varying riders and premium structures is even more confusing. Again, it's your agent's responsibility to walk with you as you go on your journey in understanding how these policies work. It's not the agent's job to sell you something so they can quickly cash in and earn a commission. And again, don't be mystified just because some of these internet personalities can show you a really large number in the year one cash value box. It's very easy to do that, and it doesn't mean that it's a good policy you should actually get. In fact, I have a number of clients who came to me after they worked with a different agent and found out that the policy they received really wasn't what they thought they were receiving. You heard me mention a life insurance illustration. That is a document that you will be reviewing as part of your buying process for any life insurance company. If you're not shown an illustration, that's a big red flag. In the next video, I'm going to show you what an illustration is like, what to look for, and maybe some questions that you should consider asking your agent as you move through this process. You'll see a link to that video appearing on the screen shortly. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.